Hello, cooking enthusiasts. This week's video is going to be kind of a follow-up to a video I posted about a month and a half ago, which was a beef tartare recipe. We are starting this recipe with a quick pickle. So these are just apple slices that are briefly sort of blanched with just boiling water. The actual pickling liquid in this case is essentially a constructed acid. It is the same ratio of water, citric acid, and malic acid found in lime juice and was then flavored with a bunch of apple skin. This is based on the concept of a super juice or an oleocitrate from the cocktail world, and I'm sure I will touch on that concept more in the future. The next component for this recipe is the seasoning for the homemade potato chips. The base of the seasoning is a mixture of dried herbs with some toasted seaweed, both nori and kombu kelp. I will link to the information for that seasoning mixture in the description. Otherwise, it's just salt, a little sugar, some fresh white pepper, and then diluted IG. And once again, IG are other isolated savory compounds that work to enhance MSG. And in this case, there's lots of natural MSG in the herb and seaweed mixture. For this particular beef tartare, we are actually essentially shallow frying it in a wok, and it has just been chilling in the freezer for a few minutes while the oil gets hot. Obviously, this is not standard for tartare, but there are a few reasons I've been playing around with it on multiple occasions. In this particular instance, it just wasn't the best quality beef. It was just some regular supermarket tenderloin that was in my dad's freezer, and we defrosted. So giving the outside a good hard sear is just kind of a little extra safety measure. But even if I didn't have those concerns with a higher quality piece of beef, the searing still adds an extra dimension of flavor, which is really the primary motivation. And the reason for using the wok is because after the beef, we add even more oil, and this allows us to fry some scallions and then eventually the potato chips. If you wanted to take inspiration from the dish, but not serve it with homemade potato chips, you could obviously use another vessel like a frying pan, but there is sort of a nice workflow that you get. After the beef, you add a decent amount more oil, and then, as the oil temperature is raising, you get to cook off the scallions around the 150 Celsius range. We are just looking for them to be very lightly golden brown, and they will primarily bring sweetness to the dish. This also, incidentally, flavors the oil 
slightly. And now we turn to the probably most technical part of the recipe, frying the homemade potato chips. We're actually not sure what kind of potatoes these are. They look to be russets or very similar, but they were very large from the Chinese grocery store, sliced uniformly on a mandolin, and not crazy thin. I would estimate about two millimeters, and the uh, slices were soaked overnight in water, spiked with a little bit of neutral vinegar. The water and the acidity sort of helps rinse off starch, and the pH actually makes the chips brown more slowly, so it's easier to completely fry without burning. The lower pH also reinforces the structure of the potato, combined with the thickness produces a very sturdy, crunchy chip, not just a thin and crispy chip. Next, we are making some components for the final dish. Instead of mixing everything together, I decided to go with kind of a layered dish. So the gently fried scallions were chopped and then we're dressing that with freshly grated garlic and ginger for and then we are binding that together with just a touch of mayonnaise obviously homemade or maybe even og japanese kewpie mayo would be best but this is just a chinese brand we are trying and it's pretty good then there is the beef layer as you can see it is totally raw on the inside but brown on the outside and we're just chopping that into a nice fine dice we are still going to use an egg yolk on top so i felt like this layer didn't need any mayonnaise or oil and the beef is being combined with the quick pickled apple for contrast a nice acidic component is very important for a tartare but it needs to be something solid like a pickle so you get bursts of sourness and the entire dish isn't acidic finally we get to plating again we are going for layers and slightly fancy a generous ring mold for the aromatic layer of the cooked scallion and raw garlic and ginger followed by the slightly smaller ring mold to pile up the beef mixture and make a little divot for the egg final garnishes are a little bit of the fresh scallion greens and the same dry herb mixture that went on to the potato chips except not powderized the egg yolk did break unfortunately but it partially held together long enough to get some nice photos so honestly that is pretty much it for this recipe overall i'm really happy with how it turned out again if you saw my 
Tortar with Tempura video from several weeks ago. That one was pretty good, but there were definitely some improvements in terms of flavor balancing and other aspects. This version, I would say almost like 96% perfect execution in terms of what I wanted. And honestly, definitely something I would make again almost verbatim. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Oh my god. It's so good. It's so good, Quinn. Okay.